Hey guys, Matt from SoundRolling.com. Wanted to answer a question that someone sent to me yesterday saying that they were uh, thinking of uh, buying a certain device for a multiple camera shoot, um, but they were worried that it didn't have Genlock. And the role of Genlock and is it essential? Is every timecode device redundant if it doesn't have Genlock? So I thought I'd just cover my, my general opinion and what I've picked up from other people. Um, so firstly, live. Uh, you want to make sure that, again, in a multiple camera scenario, uh, any live stuff that you're doing, uh, Genlock is pretty much essential to make sure that the the counting of the frames is exactly the same, so you don't get any kind of weird crossover. Um, the other place that drift um, can happen as well is just in long uh, takes. So if you're talking like, I don't know, half an hour or something like that, um, then, yeah, it's more likely drift. The longer you go on, basically, the more likely drift is to occur. Um, and the difference between time code, which is just counting those frames and when they burst, and um, genlock, which is actually triggering the burst. So it's locking it into a consistent mode of not drifting because things that are on the same genlock are triggering at exactly the same time. So you're not getting even like quarter of a frame out. Um, and then you're truly, truly in sync, as opposed to just counting. Um, because there can be a slight discrepancy of, even if you are counting frames, they can be just ever so slightly out. Um, so I guess it depends on the kind of work that you're doing. I would say that if you're doing things where it's going to be a very, um, it's not going to be a very long take, uh, then it's going to be fine. Um, then counting frames is kind of fine. So if it's like three minute, three minute takes you're doing or something, I think you would get away with that personally. Um, again, it's just making sure that in a multi-cam setup that you are completely locked in. Um, just like if you record on two recorders, you should connect them with word clock. And what that's doing is that's actually getting samples. So it's, it's collecting and getting completely accurate sync between uh, samples of um, device A and device B. Um, because then you're truly in sync. So think of it like that, I guess. And that's kind of my kind of two cents on it. So you can buy timecode devices that don't have Genlock, uh, but definitely if you're in a live scenario or a scenario with um, lots of cameras or even maybe different types of cameras, there's a few shoots where they use different types of cameras all on the same shoot. So maybe you want to put that there as well. Um, and again, at the end of the day, I suppose it comes down to uh, if the client wants to pay for it as well and that you communicate this as part of an aspect of sync um, that's important to their kind of workflow and making sure that they can achieve what they want to achieve. Um, so that's my kind of thoughts. I'd love to hear your thoughts about um, using Genlock and do you use it all the time now with things like the Ultra Sync 1 coming out? And um, yeah, just any more thoughts or any more use cases? Because again, I haven't really used it that much except for when it was live. Um, and that includes kind of like Facebook, Facebook live streams, things like that, and uh, super long takes um, as well. So apart from that, I'm just uh, on normal time code, or with a camera that obviously doesn't accept Genlock, um, which is still sadly the case sometimes. Um, so until next time, see you later.